let's have a look at this question based on the metric work about work and the work function. It says here that a 100 kilogram box slides down a rough inclined plane. It means that the movement of the block is down this plane and that there is definitely friction. A man applies a constant force F on the box such that it slides down the inclined plane at a constant velocity. So the man is applying a force up the slope, but the block is moving down the slope. For your first question, it asks you to draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the box as it slides down the inclined plane. So the first thing is a free body diagram is just a dot. Always remember that. And then we're going to have our forces indicated here. The first force is the normal force, and this force is there due to the fact that the block is on the surface. I'm going to call it F subscript N. Then up the slope, we have the force applied by the man. I'm going to call this F applied. We also have the force due to gravity, which you can either have as a force just directly downwards, or you can split it into its components, which means then you will have FG parallel, and that means parallel to the surface, and also FG perpendicular. We will also have a force of friction, and remember that friction always is in the opposite direction to motion, which means here that friction is going to be up the slope as well. For the next question, write down the magnitude of the net force acting on the box as it slides down the inclined plane and give a reason for the answer. Because I said that you have to write it down, it means that you don't have to do any calculations. And when I read this question carefully, it says that this box is sliding down the inclined plane at a constant velocity. Newton 1, an object will remain at rest or move at a constant velocity unless acted upon by a resultant force. Therefore, the resultant force on this block is zero Newton. To give a reason here, you can say because the block moves at a constant velocity, there is no resultant force acting on the block. The next part of this question says that the frictional force between the box and the inclined plane is 60 Newton. So we know our force of friction here is going to be equal to 60 Newton. The vertical height is 1,2 meters. Then it asks us for a definition. What is a non-conservative force? Now, a non-conservative force is basically a force for which the work done in moving an object between two points depends on the path taken. So if we look at this example, it's clear that the force applied as well as the force of friction are both non-conservative forces that will definitely depend on the path taken. Then for question 4.4, it says, calculate the work done by the man on the box. There are basically three ways in which we can go and answer this question. One is to say that we use work net equals the change in kinetic energy, the work energy theorem. We can use work net equaling the change in EK. We can also go and calculate F net first. Because we have all of these forces, we can go and calculate F net. And remember, we will not be using any of the forces that act at a 90 degree angle with our work. We can also go and say that work done by non-conservative forces will be equal to the change in EK plus the change in EP. So there are basically three ways in which we can go and answer this question. If we go and look at the work net, that means that we're going to look at the work done by the force applied plus the work done by the force of friction, plus the work done by the normal force, plus the work done by the force of gravity in the parallel, and the work done by the force of gravity perpendicular. And when we add all of them together, it will give us the change in EK. In this case, the change in EK will be zero, because when we move at a constant velocity, the velocity is not going to change, and therefore, this will equal zero. So if we look at the work done by the applied force, here we can go and expand on this a little bit. So here if we want to go and calculate the work done by the man on the box, we're going to have the work done by friction. Frictional force is 60, and then we've got to add our change in x, 
and our angle cross 180 degrees. The work done by the normal force will be zero. The work done by the force of gravity in the parallel direction is going to be Fg, which is basically going to be 100 times 9.8 sin theta. And then we're going to multiply that with the angle between the displacement and Fg parallel, which is zero degrees because zero degrees gives us one. So I'm just going to add times one. And the work done by the force of gravity in the perpendicular direction is also zero because of the cos 90 degrees. And now we can go and simplify this a little. It's going to be 60 times six, and cos 180 is negative one, and we leave out this zero, and this is going to be plus 980. And now we can go and calculate that angle theta over here. Sin theta is going to be opposite, 1,2 over hypotenuse 6. And if you use your calculator, shift sin 1,2 divided by 6, it gives you this angle of 11,54 degrees. So we can substitute this into our formula, sin 11,54 degrees, and all of this is going to be equal to 0. Now if we go and calculate the work done by the man on the box, it gives us a negative answer of 8162. Why negative? Because the box is going to move down the slope, the force applied by the man is up the slope. As I've mentioned, you can also first go and calculate F net, or you can go and calculate the work done by the non-conservative forces, in this case, the work done by the man on the box, Fa, as well as the work done by friction, Ff. Remember, the change in Ek will be equal to zero. The change in Ep, you're going to use the height of 1,2 to calculate your answer there. Then if we go back to our question, the next part here, calculate the magnitude of force F exerted by the man on the box. When we know that the work done by the man on the box equals negative 816, we also know that the work done by the man on the box is equal to Fa multiplied by the change in X cos theta. And this is going to be equal to 816. Now, Fa here is our unknown. The change in x6, and this is going to be cos 180 degrees, because Fa is 180 degrees from the displacement. And this is equal to negative 816. We can now go and calculate Fa as 136 Newton, and it will be up the slope. Remember when you do questions like this to make sure of your angles and to make sure that you substitute the correct values into your formula.